Today I'm here to talk to you about domestic abuse, and specifically domestic abuse, not domestic violence, as it's often called. Because domestic abuse is much more than a violent crime. Language is important. Abuse now includes financial, emotional, harassment and stalking, and online and digital abuse. Domestic abuse is not a new phenomenon. Historically, ever since there were societies, there has been domestic abuse. One example of this is the 15th century. The Catholic Church held that there were rules of marriage where men were allowed to hit their wives. In fact, it was good for the soul. And it's only recently, in the later part of the 20th century, that it's now legally and socially not okay. It's been a very, very long time coming. So what is domestic abuse? Domestic abuse is a pattern of incidents of controlling, coercive, or threatening behavior. Of course, men and children can be victims, but overwhelmingly, it is experienced by women, and the perpetrators are men. Domestic abuse can be hard to spot. As I've mentioned, there's not always bruises. Do you know anyone who has exhibited some of these behaviors? It doesn't mean that domestic abuse is happening, but we could start a conversation. You can support and listen and communicate. Domestic abuse is a gender crime. According to a study by Women's Aid, women are more likely to be victims. On top of this, women are more likely to be killed. We have moved forward as a society. I want to make this clear, we are getting there. In 2006, 89 countries had legislation that stopped domestic abuse or supported women in some way. This is almost a 50% increase from 2003, where it was only 45. However, around the world, overcoming violence completed a study and highlighted that one in three women have been abused in her lifetime. I'm going to repeat that again. One in three women have been abused in her lifetime. So, why doesn't domestic abuse get reported? The victim will love their perpetrator if they are in a relationship with them. They don't want them getting into trouble. They don't want them to have a criminal record. There's also shame. Some people feel ashamed that they are in the situation that they are in. They don't want it to go public. There's fear of retali retaliation. So if they were to report it, would their situation get worse? They may be an offender. They may have a criminal record, which will then le lead to having a fear of the police. They may not trust the police. And they may not be sure it's a crime, especially if it hasn't been a physical assault. So they are not sure if they even have anything to report. This is called the dark figure of crime. It's a term used by sociologists and criminologists. It describes the unreported and undisclosed crime. We have to recognize that domestic abuse happens a lot more frequently than we know about because people do not report it. In fact, when they do report it, in 2020, over a million domestic abuse cases were reported in the UK. Of those reported, 41% were not recorded, so they are not on the crime statistics. This means that crime statistics cannot be trusted. So when COVID hit and we went into lockdown, 
The World Health Organization completed a report that, highlight, that highlighted that COVID-19 itself did not create more domestic abuse cases. The domestic abuse perpetrators are responsible for their own actions. However, getting help when you're in a domestic abuse situation during lockdown was very difficult for victims. They also had no respite. They couldn't go to school, they couldn't go to work, they couldn't go to their safe place. Women's Aid completed a study that showed three quarters of women during the lockdown reported it was difficult to escape. The only way they could reach out was with online or telephone support. The United Nations of Women completed a study again in 2020. Before the pandemic, 243 million women globally, around the age 14, sorry, 15 to 49, experienced abuse within the last 12 months. After lockdown, despite the difficulty of getting help, we saw a huge increase in online and telephone support. 30% increased in France and Cyprus, 33% in Singapore, 25% in Argentina. Canada, Germany, Spain, UK and USA have similar figures. What the lockdown did was they exacerbated factors, such as financial worries, cramped living conditions. The victims were isolated with their abusers. It was impossible to move. You couldn't go out, you couldn't get help. During lockdown, we were all told, stay home, stay safe. It was not safe for everybody. There is a lot of help out there. These are just a few. The Women's Aid Organization, it is a UK-based uh, help center, but you can get online support around the world. Hill Telephone, it offers secure counseling in multiple languages. The Federal Office of the LGBTQ here in Dusseldorf will help with numerous problems, but it also helps with domestic abuse. EC Europa, they have a list of EU telephone numbers specifically for domestic abuse. So no matter where you are in the EU, you can find a telephone number to help you. And very locally to us in Dusseldorf, there is a NACTPUNKT, which offers a variety of services. But they also offer emergency housing, counseling, and medical help to those, especially women trying to flee. So what can we do going forward? The World Health Organization has given us an acronym, which is great. It is respect. We need to respect each other. So as part of that, relationship skills. We need to improve how we view one another in relationships. We need to be confident that we are worth being in a positive relationship. And this is especially important for those children and young people to start recognizing that they deserve to be in a positive relationship. Empowerment of women. Empower women in your life to push their boundaries, to increase their skills. We need to be lifting each other up. We need to be encouraging and promoting each other. Services. All those services that we've mentioned, so shelters, police officers, schools, healthcare workers, they all need the funding to be able to do the fantastic work they've been doing. Poverty. We need to reduce poverty. It has been proven in the multiple studies that we've seen that low socioeconomic status leads to more domestic abuse. Enabling environments in schools, workplaces, public places, we need to be able to offer information to people that may be coming in to use the services. It's also important to train the people that are in those services to be able to work with 
people going through domestic abuse. Child and adolescent abuse prevention. Domestic abuse has a severe impact on your mental health. We need to ensure that we're giving children and adolescents that kind of help, especially if they have been through something as traumatic as a domestic abuse home. We need to transform attitudes and belief systems. You need to challenge negative attitudes. You need to challenge beliefs that are not correct. You need to become an ambassador and change your community, their belief systems. One example of this is the Domestic Abuse Act of 2021. It was only possible to have this act created because of those campaigns for change, because of the people behind those campaigns for change. Because of this act, we now have a much broader definition so we have the financial, the emotional, the harassment, stalking, and the online and digital abuse. We also have a definition that includes transgender people, and it wants to give more help to children who have been through domestic abuse situations. It does highlight that domestic abuse is not a physical, only physical, it is much more than that and that women are much more likely to be victims. This is an example of how we can change society. We can make a difference. Thank you.